Hey everyone, welcome to our second gear placement video. After making the first one last time, I had such a good time getting to review my gear placements and I got a lot of positive feedback from everybody so we figured why not make another one. So like the last video, this is going to include about a month worth of gear placements such as cams and nuts in places like Taki, Joshua Tree, and Suicide Rock and other similar places. Something that we're going to be doing a little differently this time is we are going to be including a couple of whips at the end of the video in order to see whether or not the gear I placed to protect those whips well, ended up failing or holding the fall. Um, there's no better way to actually test it than to test it, right? So similar to last time, feel free to let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the placements I made, uh, if you have any advice, or if you want to share any comments because I do not know everything and I am open to positive criticism. So we're going to start off with a bomber nut, it looks like, and then it's followed up by another pretty bomber 0.5 that gets slotted in this crack. Moving along, we're going to be placing another nut. And although the constriction on this nut is pretty good, I do wish it was a little deeper in the crack. It's a little shallow for me. So I end up extending it because um, I'd be a little, I was a little worried that, um, given the length of the route, it could walk out if, it, if the rope jerked it around too much. Um, it's followed by this bomber 0.75 behind this nice outcropping of rock. And then another good small nut that looks like it fits this nice small constriction. This 0.75 here looks good, um, but it was actually placed in suspect rock and I just placed it more for mental protection just to like get me to go over the move that I needed to do. Oh my God, this one's um, this nice. nut right here was bomber though. And in person, it looked like this constriction was meant for that one piece. This point two is perfect, which is my favorite size, protects the traverse well. This nut right here though is not one that I would 100% trust. It may or may not have fall, taken the fall. Um, it could have walked a little too much if uh, the rope pulled it around, and so I didn't really like that. But as you can tell, I followed up with a 0.5 pretty quickly. And you can tell that I have a 0.4 still up there, which is gonna come out. Sometimes when I'm trying to figure out what camera to place and I realize that the 0.4 doesn't fit, I just leave it there to save some energy and get the next piece that I'm gonna use. Because I find that the sooner I clip a piece of gear, uh, the more likely I am to stop over gripping and save some energy. This 0.75 looks perfect. Nice and slotted too. Sometimes I forget the route description so I have to look at my phone for the beta. Can't be the only one. Here's a nice 0.5. Oh, so here um, I started climbing up and then I realized I was gonna enter a little area where there was gonna be no placements available. So I figured why not down climb a little bit? I'm always okay with that and I feel like that's a good skill to have. I end up placing this bomber 0.75 that's gonna protect the upper section and I'm able to truck along. I remember this rock. This rock was really coarse and we're going to see it more often in this video. Uh, these giant crystals kind of prevent you from placing gear adequately, but if you wiggle it around, eventually you get around them and you end up placing that bomber 0.5. Here's another 0.5 that was placed on a layback, which I hate because you can never inspect the rock or the placement very well from this stance and this angle. And I've actually had a placement pop um, on me when placing from a layback because I was placing a 0.5 and I didn't get to see what the inside of the crack looked like and it turned out to be placed in um, poor quality rock so when I actually ended up falling on it the rock around it exploded and luckily the placement below that caught me but ever since then every time I'm placing from a layback I make sure to give it a really solid pull. This, boy gets a clean. this next piece looks like a bomber one this looks like it's going to turn out to be a pretty good number two. Yep, bomber number two. Oh, I remember this piece. So uh, the coarse crystals were making it hard to like place it nicely in a way that I would like. So that in combination with like some of the flaring inside of the crack, some of the flaring that was appearing inside the crack made me realize that it would just be better to climb a couple more feet 
and end up in this more parallel, nice, uniform crack to place this bomber number two. So sometimes I just realize I just got to make a couple more moves. This is a bomber number one that gets slotted nicely. I like clams that I can slide up into pot. Keeps it really secure. Like, you can slide it up into a better spot. Another point four that's getting slotted nicely in this traverse. And I'm trying to finesse it so that I can get it caught on like small little constrictions, make it a little bit better. Same thing with this point seven five. A lot of this traverse was actually kind of flaring. Um, it's kind of hard to tell from the video, but with a little bit of work and like looking for like the small outcroppings in the rock and the smaller crystals, you can place really bomber gear like that 0.75. This two is awesome. Another good 0.75. Solid number two. I wish I did place it a little deeper in the crack, but as you can tell, I don't even extend it. So the route was probably really, the route was very uh, straight up and down. So I'm sure it was fine, but I wish it was a little deeper. Maybe like that number one, which ended up being bomber. This number three, I wish I set a little lower uh, in terms of direction of pull because it could have used a little bit more of a like downward angle but it's still bomber. Uh, great point five. This nut's gonna be kind of difficult to see because the crack is so, um, is providing so much coverage over it, but it actually ends up being a really bomber nut that ended up being really difficult to pull out. A little underarm crossover point five placement that ends up being bomber. I think we're gonna get a better look at this nut in a second and it's gonna be end up being placed in a place that I didn't really like. I feel like a cam would have been better there. Um and that 0.75 that followed it though was really bomber, so thankfully we got that in. This 0.5 is good. Great number one here. Looks like we're gonna have another great 0.75. Yep. Solid number two. This nut placement here it looks really good, but there isn't actually a lot of rock on the left side of it. And so it kind of makes me nervous considering that um, there isn't a solid chunk of rock to the left of it. So if I did end up falling, I'm not sure if it would have held or if the rock to the left would have just like crumbled and exploded around it. So I ended up going a little higher up after that and placing this bomber number two. I think I'll just sneak it in there this point five looks good, but the rock around it looks kind of suspect, but... As you can tell, the next placement is also going to have kind of suspect rock around it. Um, I can't tell if it was the chalk or if it, like, around it that made it look even more questionable, but that was the only gear I could place, and so I took it. The three was bomber. This nut, I would have preferred a small cam, like a .1, I think, instead next time, but I'll take it if that's the only thing I have. Same thing with this one. I wish it was a little deeper, but the crack was only so deep, and so you have to take what you're given sometimes. This is a bomber .5. Another bomber point three. Bomber point seven five. Bomber point five again. Another bomber point four. This one's extra nice because it's sitting in this like nice little constriction, which I feel like makes it more secure. Less prone to walk also. Ooh, a nice horizontal number one. Totally whip on that. Another horizontal placement, a number two. I wish I didn't overcame that so much, but it came out pretty easily. Bomber point four. Ooh, this nut right here is perfect. That is a perfect nut placement in my opinion. Sweet point five. Don't know what that is, but it looks bomber. This was somebody else's gear. Um, so I'm not totally familiar with the next few cams. This number one looks really big and I'm sure I switched, yep, I switched to a .75. I was probably just trying to save the 0.75s because I know the crux to this climb is in the 0.75 size. And I probably only had a couple. I'm not sure what this is, but it looked really overcam. That would have been definitely overcam. That fits much better. I'm glad I switched it out. Much better decision. You can tell it looks bomber. Perfect number three. 
Here's a number one. It's a little tight, but it works. As you can tell, the same crack, a 0.75 would have worked much better and it did a little higher up. And I think we're running into the same kind of size crack and this one looks like it's gonna be really tight, but I think it ends up being perfect and yep, there it is. It ends up being a bomber placement. They were all so far easy to remove. Oh, I remember this. At this point, I had run out of, oh, out of ones. twos, or I had run out of ones and point seven fives, and the only two placement was where my hand was. So I had to switch over to a thinner hand jam, which is a little bit less comfortable, and then place in my bomber number two hand jam, but I'll take a solid cam. That's easy to remove later and well placed and just uh, keep moving. Sweet number three. Man, this rock was really coarse. One of the few times I wish I taped up. This number two, super suspect. There's a lot of cr oh big God, crystals in there that create like uh, little holes and pockets. And so the cam was like really difficult to place. I ended up finding a better place for it, but I definitely wanted to climb through this as quickly as possible so I could place this bomber number three, which you'll see right here. Boom. And this is much better. And it gets followed up by another bomber three, a little higher up. This is such a good crack. I love the fist jams in it. Oh, I remember this. I hate when this happens, and it happens to me every now and then. And I find it's like the most annoying thing. It's when this like alpine sling doesn't extend perfectly and it gets looped up on itself. I'm not sure if it weakens the sling if it were to actually catch a fall, but uh, I don't want to find out. Uh, so I always end up fixing it on leave. But I'm sure someone out there knows. So if you know, let me know. Ooh, I love placing the number five. It's one of the new ones, too. We recently got a nice new set of cams. So here's the first whip. It's going to be on a number three, and it's going to be placed um, on this far left. And it's going to be backed up by a .75 because this is going to be the only piece keeping me off the ground, and I'd rather have two than one. I placed it far left because I wanted to reduce rope drag, even though it's putting its stem over that outcropping of rock, which could break the stem, but it would still catch. Um, let me know whether or not you think it's going to hold the fall because we're going to witness it in a second. Boom, and it does actually catch the fall, which is pretty nice. Always love that. So this is on a 0.75, um, and it's going into this small pocket. You can see all the lobes are engaged. This was the best shot I could take of it. Um, go ahead and look at it and see if you think it's going to catch the fall. So here's a little climbing, getting pumped up, realizing that that did not hold. So I tried a one before that, and unfortunately the one wouldn't fit in that pod. The head width was too big. And when I later talked to somebody who had climbed it and asked what they thought about protecting that section, they said that um, most people don't actually try to protect that section because the pods are too flaring and they're too awkward to place any real gear in. Um, so most people just go straight from the last piece of pro below that caught me all the way up to the jug that's far left that I didn't realize until after. But, uh, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. So that wraps up all those cam placements and nut placements for the last month. Hopefully you enjoyed. Again, I'm always open to criticism and constructive feedback. So if you have anything you want to comment, go ahead and let us know. Uh, if you want to see more videos, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to see a different type of video or you think you want to learn about something different, let me know and I'll see if I can make a video for that because I'm having a pretty good time making these. And don't forget, if you want to spend more time outdoors, indoors, subscribe.